this uh, conference for us. Ayanna, thank you very much indeed for coming through. So just describe for us and take us through this road getting to this uh, provincial elective conference. Yeah, good morning to you, Blaine. Good morning to our viewers. As you said, we're coming to you live from uh, Ulundi, where the IFP is holding its uh, provincial uh, elective conference. And you probably can see uh, behind us, uh, Blaine, queues of uh, IFP delegates who've come across the province of KwaZulu-Natal. About 4,000 delegates are going to be taking part in this, uh, elect in this conference, also electing uh, the new leadership. Um, that, is, uh, that is to take the IFP forward here in the uh, province of uh, Guazulu Natal. They've come from all the districts and it has been a, a long road for the party. Um, this conference is sitting now. Its last time that it was held was in 2011. Now, uh, throughout uh, the years, and we know that in uh, uh, press conferences and in our interactions with IFP leaders, when we've been asking them about uh, the uh, conferences and why there has been uh, some delays. Uh, party leaders have said that uh, there has been uh, some issues that they wanted to uh, resolve. Many of these conferences were supposed to have held, uh, supposed to have taken place before uh, the uh, recent elections in May, but the party was saying that it was important for them from last year uh, towards the end of the year that they start focusing uh, on the elections. They had their targets for uh, the elections and so they wanted to put all their focus in the elections and felt that at the time holding a conference could distract uh, from that. There were also issues of branches that they wanted uh, to uh, deal with. Uh, at one point, the president of the IFP in Kosmango Suchiptele is even saying that they picked up that there were ghost branches and so they needed to deal with gatekeeping and manipulation at branch level and now uh, the party is saying it's now uh, satisfied that all is in order. Uh, they've had the registration of uh, new members and uh, at this time uh, they were ready uh, for the province. They've issued uh, various conferences. This is going to be amongst the first conferences that are going to be held. There's also going to be the uh, youth uh, conference, the uh, women's uh, brigade conference as well as in August will be uh, the national elective conference of the IFP. But to speak more about uh, this conference and the road uh, to uh, today, great deal of excitement that we've been picking up. Delegates have been singing out uh, aside uh, mood, quite jovial, very, very happy it seems just from the IFP uh, uh, members that we've been seeing uh, here. It's said to be also a, plain, a very highly contested election, but to speak to us more on the preparations and where we are I'm now joined by the spokesperson of the IFP, Mr. Mkulego Tlengo. Mr. Tangwal, thank you so much uh, for your time. Great excitement I see. It's been a long time coming. Um, for the members and as I was saying that you have previous days IFP leaders saying that you wanted to make sure that you had sorted out issues with uh, branches, uh, uh, membership issues and finally now you're satisfied that uh, you're in the right uh, state for you to hold a conference. No for sure and thanks to you and the viewers. Look at the outset what was very clear for the party was we did not want to have our conferences challenged um, because of a failure to follow our own processes. We had to be committed to our own commitments, be committed to our own constitutional um, responsibilities and requirements of the party. And so when all these challenges arose, we were duty-bound as the National Executive and the National Council to set into motion a thorough process of investigation, auditing, and we've now satisfied ourselves that um, the party um, is good for conferences. Of course, you'll recall that um, this is an announcement we made in January, as you were saying earlier on, but the toss-up was, do we focus on elections or we go to the conferences and the the wisdom of the National Council at the time was that let us focus on the national elections, of course, which actually worked very well for us. We were, as you saw, the election results. So the IFP, a recent electoral decline, built on the gains of 2016. And so the elections and this conference and the upcoming conferences are now part and parcel of the um, IFP road ahead, as in 24 months we'll be going to local government elections. And so it was very, very important that we are not haphazard. Of course, we had the undue pressure um, from critics, from your so-called analysts, and so on. people who are really outside the IFP space, not understanding our internal processes, but we had to withstand all of that as well, and I'm sure now there's a greater appreciation, one, about the transparency that the party employed about its processes. Those were very open about our challenges, but most importantly our ability to be committed to our own commitments, and we said we'll hold the conferences, and today's the first phase in that regard. 
Now, uh, the other point is about factions. And I know that uh, Nkosif Telezi has spoken like any other party that is in, if you're moving towards uh, uh, conferences. And I know particularly you too, at some point there was reports of one group supporting certain leaders and another group supporting another. How have you managed to deal uh, with uh, these factions? But also, uh, seemingly some say they might play themselves out here. I know yesterday you had a meeting to try and see how you can manage today in the elective and the election uh, in itself. Have you been able to possibly get into any agreement or are we going to see the delegates here uh, having to go to the vote and, and, and elect their preferred candidate? Look, what we want to say is that just like any other part, we are not immune to the cancer um, of divisions and um, factions. And the issue of camps has been one of great concern to the party leadership. And it was precisely one of the things which um, had anchored the, the issue of bogus branches. They arose out of um, that particular reality. And so the process of auditing and dealing with um, bogus branches was also to make sure that we push back on the frontiers of division. Um, yesterday the Provincial Council, as part of the prerequisites for this conference, uh, met as a clearing house to deal with matters, agree on agenda, process and so on. We met yesterday um, and nominations for the position of chair um, were done and two um, candidates um, emerged um, out of that. Um, and so we are expecting as a party leadership nothing more and nothing less other than a disciplined process of election and voting. We are not going to tolerate anything which will seek to derail this conference. We're not going to tolerate anybody who wants to put themselves ahead of party process. And so we are going to be exercising maximum political party discipline to ensure that the collective outcomes of this um, conference are not challenged. And we want to make sure we come out of this conference united. Um, and so we are really calling on delegates and party uh, leadership and those who will be receiving the report out of this conference to ensure that the outcome satisfies all of us and that the party does not lose the momentum um, th 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 that we are on. But it is important for us to recognize that the contestation of ideas forms part and parcel of the democratic discourse. But moreover, this conference should not just be characterized as an elective conference. It is also dealing with the roadmap to 2021. So it's an issue-based conference and the issue of leadership is just but one aspect. And so we are really going to be speaking under the theme of um, committing ourselves to the ideals of democracy and development of our people and so on. So we are expecting even the draft resolutions are speaking to um, a, a functional um, IFP. Also recall that we are the official position now and so we want to make sure that our um, MPLs in the legislature are given the marching orders which inspire confidence that we are a party um, which is in route to governing. Just speaking about uh, that um, being yourself the op official position, we know that uh, of, uh, uh, um, uh, after the results came in of the election, one of the points that was raised by the IEC in area, areas where they had a low turnout were in areas that are your stronghold, particularly where we are here in Ulundi, neighboring uh, uh, Nongoma. These areas are your strongholds, Mr. Tlangu. You had said that you were going to be meeting after the election to review your process and possibly see how those people that you've placed in those areas to lead the party may have uh, failed. Uh, the IFP, how far are you on that? Well, we have received the initial report from the daily management committee in terms of the electoral performance of the IFP and we have actually drilled into the numbers to do a holistic um, assessment. Um, the first phase was a meeting of um, IFP councillors um, two weeks ago which um, sought to look at the role and the functioning or lack thereof of councillors as we relied on them to be the um, vehicle of driving the campaign. So we have done that audit and the POC, the political Oversight committee is dealing with that. On the 19th, uh, 20th and 21st of July, there will be um, a three-day meeting where we'll now be doing further analysis for the purposes of now drafting resolutions as part of corrective action turnaround strategy, which will be finalized on the 11th of August ahead of the conference so that that report can feed into it. But what is evidently clear is that whilst um, the IFP may have had um, issues about its Get Out the Voter campaign, mm -hmm. they does seem on the other hand to have been a general disquiet amongst the electorate who simply just did not want to vote. So we're looking at that sentiment because it's obviously driven um, by something. But as a party, we are doing everything possible and everything necessary mm. to ensure that we apply ourselves according, so we can respond accordingly to that need. Um, and the listening campaign will also be part and parcel of us going to structures. And one of the things we're expecting out of the provincial executive to be elected out of this conference is to go and consolidate close rank and particularly focus on our strongholds, but also venture into um, territories where the IFP just
just did not do well. Right. So this is about the march for the local government elections in 2024, and that's why it's so strategically important that the conference is successful. Before I let you go, Mr. Sleng, I know you, that you, you've been pulled. Many sad people want to chat to you. Last one. Um, you know, there's often said that the IFP president will uh, pick, will, will, will name somebody that is preferred uh, 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 to hold a particular position. Uh, in, the, in this conference, rumors that he may have uh, uh, named uh, people. Any truth to that? None whatsoever. But what people must also remember is that the president is a member of parliament. Um, and as the friend, he is a member of the provincial council, and so he will participate in the discussions from that capacity. I can tell you without any fear of contradiction that um, his branch is not the most vibrant branches, and he participates in, a, in, in in those activities because he has always recognised himself as the first amongst equals, and making sure that that which is the directives of the party about what we do and do not do, he himself embodies that. And so he had attended that um, provincial council meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, as a delegate, it's very important that we do not strip him of those rights um, which he enjoys in the constitution and so he participated just like I participated and every other member of the provincial council participated and the outcomes of um, that uh, provincial council are the outcomes of the provincial council, not an individual. Alright, Mr. Tlengwa, I know that people are pulling you aside. Thank you very much uh, for chatting uh, to us. We possibly uh, will speak to you again uh, later. Know that we're supposed to get underway at about 12, uh, uh, 12 midday. No, for sure. We, of course what you see going on now is that we have done pre-registration um, and delegates I'm just merely now collecting the accreditation tags and um, for the purposes of voting because right. we also want to make sure that the voting process so the tag is part of that voting so it's important that we get through that process and I'm sure that um, it is moving with the speed we had expected slightly delayed of course but we are expecting to get underway um, soonest so that we can actually um, have a good conference but thanks very much to you guys so much appreciated. Thank you very much Mr. Tlengwa for your time. Spokesperson of the I IFP there, Mr. Mkulego Tlengwa. Just to uh, quickly just give you uh, some names of particularly the two uh, positions, uh, main positions that seem to be one that are going to be highly contested. That is the the uh, positions of chairperson. Currently uh, the outgoing chairperson is Mbangseni Yengwa. He's again contesting that uh, alongside the mayor of Nkandla, Mr. Tamin Duli. Uh, in the uh, position of secretary, the, it will be the um, outgoing uh, secretary, Mr. Velenko Sinitlabisa, who will not be contesting. And as you know, that he is the man now that has been tipped uh, to take over the reins when the uh, leader of the IFP uh, steps down. So that uh, position is now up um, uh, uh, to be contested by a uh, Mr. Ntlantla Hadebe who was the Deputy Publicity Officer against a leader uh, from the Amachuba uh, district of the IFP, Mr. Kolani Tube. So those are the names that will be contesting the positions a plane of chairperson of the province as well as that of secretary. So far, a plane, as I say, looking around, as uh, Mr. Tlangwa has said, the delegates are now just simply uh, picking up their uh, accreditation. The screening processes have already uh, been done. Heavy uh, security outside as well. The police are also here to ensure that uh, it does go off without any uh, uh, disruption or any challenges. We have not seen any issues or picked up on any issues happening around here. But of course, uh, we are going to be here uh, throughout the day. And the main opening uh, uh, address will be delivered by IFP President Nkosi Mangosutu Ptelis. We're going to leave it here for now. Blaine, and back to you in studio. All right. Ayanda, thank you very much indeed. Appreciate your reporting. Ayanda Mflongo coming to us live from Ulundi, KwaZulu-Natal. Well, public meeting is to be held with residents.